Greetings, Python coders. Alan D. Moore here, beard and all. If you watch this channel much, you know, probably, that I am the author of this book, GUI Programming with Python, a book that is all about PyCute. What you may not know is that I'm also the author of this book, Python GUI Programming with TK Enter. Now that book, as you probably can guess, is about TK Enter. And a lot of people will ask me, because I've written one book on PyCute and one book on TK Enter, which one should I choose? I thought for a while about doing a video on this and having code examples and live coding and pictures and all kinds of stuff, but I thought, you know what? That's going to get bogged down and never happen. So here we are on a Wednesday night. Kids are in bed. I'm chilling out. I thought, let's just do this old-fashioned YouTube style, put on the webcam. Let's talk it out. So here we go. This is PyCute versus TK Enter. Now, I just want to be clear. When I'm talking about PyCute, I am talking about PyCute widgets not about QML. That's a totally different thing. Um, I'm really comparing both of these because um, they're both frameworks aimed at what I would call traditional GUIs or little gray box GUIs. Um, stuff you'd make like a productivity application in. Not something that looks mobile or web-like. Not what some people would call modern. Um, these are for more old school, I need buttons and text box and, you know, things like that. Um, so we're going to compare these. Now they're both similar in that they both come from other languages and other toolkits. TK Enter comes from TK or Teak, uh, which comes from the TCL or Tickle language, the combination of which is called TickleTeak. If you have never heard of TickleTeak, and you're under 30, I would totally understand. It's pretty much only around these days, sorry Tickle Teak people, but it's pretty much only around these days because it's in Python. Um, now Cute, on the other hand, PyCute wraps Cute, uh, which is a massive C++ toolkit and framework. And it's used by tons of people, big companies you've heard of, um, programs you probably run right now use Qt. And PyQt gives us access to that. If you are a programmer of any kind, I really hope you've heard of C++, so I don't need to explain that. Both of them are open source. Both of them are cross-platform. Except, neither one of them is really big on mobile. Now, Cute may be an exception, or PyCute. It's possible, in theory, to make a PyCute app and put it on mobile. I have never succeeded in doing it. If you have, you are a smarter person than me, and please get in touch with me. I'd love to talk to you. So, that's the similarities. Let's talk about the differences. First off is the license. Uh, Tickle Teak is BSD licensed, very liberal, very free. You can do whatever you want with it. And of course, TK Enter itself, the bindings for Tickle Teak, they are part of the Python standard library. So if you can do it with Python, you can do it with TK Enter. Um, you can develop commercial stuff if you want to. Um, you know, no restrictions. You can develop open source. You can use GPL. You can use whatever. Whatever license you want, it's pretty wide open. Now, PyCute, on the other hand, is GPL. So you're pretty much going to be writing open source software with PyCute unless you are willing to buy a commercial license from the company that makes PyCute, Riverbank Software. In addition to that, you need to buy a commercial license from the Cute company that makes Cute. Qt itself is LGPL, 
which what exactly that means in terms of you writing whatever software and distributing it however you want ask your lawyer or argue about it down there in the comments I don't really know um, there is such a thing as PySide which are Python bindings from the cute company also LGPL so a little freer in terms of licensing than uh, PyQt itself uh, you do supposedly need a commercial license still to make commercial software, but that's from the cute company, so kind of one-stop shop. It's about 95% the same as PyQt, so when we're talking about PyQt and PySide, it's, it's effectively the same thing. It's just from a different place. Okay, the next thing that, that comes up, the big one, that comes up is the way they look okay so like I said both of them are widget based libraries they're meant to make the gray box sort of applications okay not your Spotify okay not like that um, however let's talk about TK enter it gets a lot of flack for the way it looks and out of the box the default widget set looks pretty bad honestly it looks like 1990s Unix I mean that's kinda of charming in a certain way if you like retro stuff but most people don't want retro um, there is a separate widget set called TTK which most people nowadays if they're gonna use TK enter they're using TTK and that brings it up at least to looking early 2000s ish um, depends on your platform. It's themed differently for Mac, Windows, and Linux. Um, and you can do a lot of adjusting on TK Enter. I think a little bit of padding and fonts, colors goes a long way with TK Enter. You can make it look decent. Um, but there are some limits. Um, it doesn't support gradients, for example. Um, it's just raster graphics. There's no SVGs, no scaling vector graphics. Um, there's no animations, so if you want swooshy controls fading in and out and stuff like that, it's not going to happen. Um, and, you know, the other frustrating thing about it, and I'll get more into this later, is that styling your widgets is just kind of inconsistent. Um, you kind of do it one way with this widget, a different way with this set of widgets. It's a little bit kooky. Um, PyQt, on the other hand, um, out of the box, default widget set. I mean, there's only one, but the default widgets, they look professional. Um, they look relatively modern. Some people would say they look out of date, but, you know, I'm old. So to me, 10 years ago is not out of date. Um, you can style them with a syntax that's very much like CSS. Um, it has gradients, transparency animations, vector graphics. Um, you can even do OpenGL in a widget, you know. And uh, I believe PyQt 6 that just came out last month, uh, I believe it supports Vulkan, if you know what that is. Um, it's a new thing to replace OpenGL, apparently. Um, and you can dig in and completely customize your widgets in any way you want. So really, if your PyQt application doesn't look modern in your eyes, it's it's your own fault. You have all the options there to do whatever it is that you need. I mean, a lot of people will just say, well, TKinter looks old and dated and PyQt looks modern. I mean, you can make both of them look good. PyQt just gives you a lot more options and makes it a lot less work. Okay, let's, let's talk next about how the underlying, or the original languages for these toolkits affects them. So TK Enter, like I said, comes from TickleTeek. Um, Wikipedia tells us that TickleTeek is a high-level, general-purpose, interpreted, actually bytecode interpreted, dynamic programming language designed with the goal of being very simple but powerful. Sound like anyone we know? Yes, it's very much like Python, at least in what it intends to do. Uh, Syntax-wise, 
it's quite a bit different. It's a little bit more like Bash, in my opinion, than like Python. Um, but it has some C constructs as well. Um, everything in Tickleteak is a string. So that's interesting. So you can manipulate things as if they were strings, even if they aren't. Um, unlike Python, it's not actually a garbage collected language, meaning it doesn't clean up after itself. But apparently the way that it works and the way that you use it that doesn't really even matter because you don't create garbage, is what they say. Not sure how that works, um, but I'll I'll take their word for it. Um, it originated like Python on Unix in the 90s, and it inherits a lot of that culture. Uh, so it's it's a good fit for Python, and so you don't often run into the tickle teak side of TK Enter. When you do, it's pretty straightforward. I, I think it's not a big, not a big deal. Qt, on the other hand, is made in C++, and C++ is very much not like Python at all. It's compiled, it's type safe, it's not garbage collected, uh, it's heavily object oriented. Which, you know, Python is object oriented too, but you can kind of pretend it's not if you want to. Um, now, Qt itself is a framework that aims to make C a much higher level language. Um, so it's kind of like a standard library for, for C that includes a GUI framework. It includes its own garbage collection uh, for cleaning up unused objects. It is very object oriented, very heavily object oriented. Everything that you do in Qt gets wrapped in an object. So, uh, you know, for example, if something takes a size, you know, like a pixel size, you're not just going to hand it a couple of integers in a tuple. You got to wrap that in a Q size object. Um, if something needs a color, you're not just going to give it you know, a color string or a hex string, you've got to make a Q color object and pass that into it. You know, everything's got a Q something. You know, you're going to want to rip the Q key off your keyboard if it doesn't fall off, if you're programming in PyQt for any length of time. Um, there's always some little Q object. Oh, I've got to, you know, create the Q object and there's flags and there's enums. It's just, it's, it's a very different kind of vibe from what you're used to as a Python programmer. And I'll give I'll give Riverbank this. They they do a good job of hiding a lot of that. At least a, a definitely a better job than they used to. I remember back with PyQ4, you never knew if you were going to get a Python string or a Q string or, you know, a Python list or a Q list. Uh, you you didn't know what was going to come back from a, a function so you kind of always had to worry about that. They've done away with all that. Everything that can be a Python object is, but there's still a lot of things that, you know, it's um, a lot of Q this and Q that. It's very object oriented in that way. And it, occasionally, very occasionally, you're going to run into memory management issues. Um, it's not often, but every now and then there, there'll be a situation where either the Python object or the, the C++ object gets deleted when it shouldn't be. Um, and that has an impact on your code. Next difference I want to talk about is the size of these libraries. Um, first off, just the physical size on disk. Uh, TK Enter, you're talking less than 10 megabytes. It's pretty small. Uh, TickleTeak on my computer is about 5 or 6 megabytes in size. And TKEnter itself is built into the standard library, so if you got Python, it's there anyway. Um, PyQt, on the other hand, Qt itself is about 65 megabytes. PyQt is about 30 on my computer. Maybe different on yours, just if you're on a different platform or it's packaged differently. And that doesn't include any of the extra libraries or dependencies or anything like that. Now, does that matter in the days of I've got a two terabyte hard drive or whatever? Um, not in terms of hard drive space, but if you are, for example, compiling with like CX Freeze or PyInstaller, an application, 
for download, that means bandwidth. Um, where I work, I've got a PyQt application that people load up over the network, over a, a UNC path. And every time they do, that's more data they've got to download over our WAN. Um, so sometimes that is kind of slow. Um, as far as the size of the library in terms of complexity, um, TKinter is pretty small. It's just a GUI framework, nothing else. It's, I don't know, a few dozen classes, maybe. Um, and you'll mostly just work with a small core of them. It's got a lot of funny little nooks and crannies from the last 30 years or so that it's been around. Um, and lots of cruft you can just kind of ignore. So it's pretty small and pretty easy to, to keep inside your head. Um, PyQt is hundreds maybe even thousands of classes. It, it's massive. You can go look at the the listing of cute classes on their documentation. It's It needs a search engine. Literally, they have a search engine on the site because it needs it. Um, it's not just a GUI framework. It's a second standard library. It has a, a threading module. It has a network stack. It has a SQL interface. It has a unit testing framework. I mean, it's got everything. It even has its own, you know, string and list and thing types. You don't deal with that in PyQt anymore. Like I said, um, that's all abstracted away. Thank you, Riverbank. Um, but it's still huge, and you have to deal with a lot of those modules. Not all of them, but um, you're going to spend a lot of time searching documentation if you're using PyQt. Speaking of documentation, let's talk about that next because this is a place where I think both libraries have a little bit of a problem. Um, so TKinter, TKinter does have some documentation um, and an API reference basically in the Python documentation, in the official standard library docs, there's an API reference. Um, but last time I checked, and I may not be up to date on this, the reference itself claimed to be somewhat incomplete. And it is. Um, if you start Googling, you'll probably run into a site called TK Docs, which is great. Um, it's a nice tutorial for using TK in several languages, including Python. And uh, it's also incomplete. Uh, there used to be a reference for an older version of TKinter at New Mexico Tech, and that's gone, but I believe somebody has it now in as, as a GitHub I.O. So you'll probably run into that if you're Googling for uh, TKinter documents. Um, we used to have a site called FBot, EFFBot, uh, and they used to have a reference, but that site seems to be down now. And my experience in researching TKinter is that all of these different resources, they all have information the other ones don't, which leads me to believe that none of them are really complete. There's just not a good go-to resource that I say, ah, oh, if I need to know something about TKinter, I'm going there. I mean, half the time I end up either at Stack Overflow or in the source code itself trying to answer a question, which hey, at least the source code's out there on GitHub. You can look at it. Now, PyQt has its own set of problems with documentation. Um, the documentation for PyQt itself is mostly focused on what PyQt does. In other words, the, the wrapper portion of it. As far as a detailed API reference, with how to use this class and how to use that class and you know what are all the arguments. We don't really have one for PyQt. What we have is the Qt documentation which is for C++. So if you are a PyQt programmer you kind of need to learn to mentally convert C++ to Python. Um, you kind of get a knack for this after a while but there are times when it's really not clear how you take this C++ information and utilize it in Python. Fortunately for us, PySide is now a thing, and this is 
relatively recent that they've kind of picked this project back up and gotten it going. Um, and they are developing documentation. Um, I haven't checked that documentation in a while. It may be more complete now than it was, uh, but I believe it's still kind of a work in progress, but that's still a super great resource for those of us writing in PyCute. All right, next thing is how do we move data around in these frameworks? Because there's a slightly different way that each one of them has. TKinter has this really cool thing called control variables. Um, and what they are are special classes that you can use to do a two-way binding between widgets. And you can put traces on these variables to see when they're written to or when they're read or when they're deleted. And that allows you to sort of shuttle data around your app and respond to changes in data. Um, PyQ doesn't have anything like that. So it's just kind of one of those cool features of TK Enter. What PyQ has to get data around is signals and slots, which is also a really cool thing that I kind of wish TK Enter has. It kind of halfway has it, but doesn't really have it. Um, signals and slots are ways that you can fire off custom events and include data with those events, just any arbitrary data you want. Um, and it's really cool. It's a great way to organize your classes, keep things decoupled, and um, get data where it needs to be in your application, which, if you're new to this, that may not mean much to you, but as you get to developing larger and larger apps, this is a big problem of how do I get this piece of data where it needs to go at the right time. Um, so anyway, two different mechanisms that leads you to coding things slightly differently in each one. Next up, let's talk about the selection of the widgets that are available. TK Enter has not a lot of widgets. And most of them are really pretty bare bones. Um, you only have very limited support for things like rich text. There is no HTML support of any kind. Um, no multimedia widgets. There is no 3D rendering like I talked about OpenGL stuff. Um, even some very basic things like a date widget, a time widget, a calendar widget. Um, missing. Now, some of these things you can get from third-party repos. Some of these things you can build yourself. And I go through that in my book to a degree. Um, but there, there is a point where you just kind of... I mean, you're not going to build a web browser, right? No, you're not going to do that in TK Enter. Um, you're not going to build a multimedia widget in TK Enter. Okay, PyCute, on the other hand, has everything. If you've seen it in a GUI, PyCute probably has it. They've got a full-on rich text editor with syntax highlighting. Uh, they've got multimedia widgets. You know, if you want to play back video or audio, they've got, like I told you earlier, OpenGL and Vulkan, so you can do 3D rendering right on your widgets. Um, there's a graphics thing for 2D animation. Um, You've got a charting library. You can make charts. You've got a full Chromium browser, right? This is the, the open source component of Chrome. Full on, basically, Chrome browser um, in a widget. So you can make your own browser, right? You can display HTML with JavaScript and CSS and all the goodies. Um, yeah, so if you've ever seen it in a GUI, PyCube probably has it, almost certainly. The last difference I want to talk about is the learning curve, or more generally, the developer experience. And this is going to feel a little negative, and I want to be clear here that I'm not running down either of these libraries. But let's be honest, nothing is perfect, and at some point you're going to get frustrated with anything you work with. Um, and I'm going to just tell you, this is kind of where the frustrations come in with each of these libraries. Because they're both frustrating in their own way. Um, but they, it's a little different. Um, so TK Enter starts out super easy to use. I mean, 
you go look up a tu tutorial for TK Enter, you'll be using it within five minutes. It's super easy for any Python programmer. Um, you can write procedural style code. You don't have to get object oriented. And I think that's something that a lot of people really like. Um, and it's just very, very gradual learning curve. And then you hit a speed bump. And what that speed bump's going to be is you're going to think, hey, I want to do this thing that I've seen in like every GUI ever since Xerox Star, you know, and it's not going to be there. You're like, there's not a widget for this. There's not a, a way to make this widget do this thing that I think every widget of this sort ought to be able to do. And so you're going to start searching. You're going to start looking up Stack Overflow posts and old forum posts and Google network news posts and all kinds of things. And you're finally going to find the answer. And it's going to be this weirdo workaround that involves making a custom class and wrapping this widget inside that widget in just the right way. And, I, and I'm talking things like having a number widget that only takes numbers or having a frame that scrolls when its content exceeds its size. Just little weird things that for some reason are missing from TK Enter that you would think just should be there. Um, and that is where the learning curve kind of starts to go up for TK Enter. Um, when you start getting into those details of wanting to make your application behave like an application probably should these days. And that kind of repeats and repeats and you'll run into that situation again and again and again and again. So that by the time that you get to a complete mature TK Enter program that really acts like you would expect it to, your code is going to be kind of ugly, a little hacky, not terribly elegant. Um, and you can mitigate that some if you're good and if you are disciplined and try to do things the right way. Um, but it's just a fact that, you know, TK Enter, you're, you feel like you're fighting it after a while to get a modern-ish experience for your users. But that said, it's perfectly functional for a lot of use cases and it's very easy to get it going and it's very small. So as long as you're happy with it, it's good. The PyQt learning curve is quite steep. Um, and it's not impossible. You're smart. You can figure it out. You figured out Python. You can figure out PyQt. But if you're not down with object-oriented programming and with writing your own classes and subclassing, you need to get a handle on that before you do PyQt or while you do PyQt, one or the other, because it is just a library that is meant to be used in an object-oriented way. And I, I don't know why, but I know some Python coders just fight that. They just don't want to admit that they need to make classes and they take pride in, you know, I have never had to write a class and I've been using Python for a thousand years. Well, if you want to use PyQt, it's time to write some classes. That's just how the library is meant to be used. You're supposed to subclass stuff, override functions, um, build things on a, a Q widget subclass, whatever. That's just how the library is meant to be used. And you need to get comfortable with that if you're going to use it. So that learning curve is pretty steep for some people. Um, there's a lot of C++ isms, like I said. You do have to kind of learn to translate from C++ to Python. Um, and like I said, even memory management comes into play. Uh, type safety comes into play. But all that said, at some point, if you keep at it, you'll get it. Right? You'll kind of get the vibe of PyQt. You'll say, oh, here's a situation where I need a Q, what's it, to wrap this data in before I pass it with this enum value to this constructor. It, I mean, you get it after a while, but there's 
there's just a steep learning curve and once you get there it's kind of all the same after that and you, you know you have access to this huge library of really cool stuff um, but you just kind of have to get to that point and it takes time it's it's a tough learn um, and I feel like if you learn to do it right and you can certainly still do it wrong but if you learn to do it right with PyQ you can definitely write more elegant code um, you can keep things decoupled and keep your concerns separated and, and just write nicer code although probably more verbose code because you got to deal with some object-oriented fussiness here and there okay so which one is better well there never is a better is there it just comes down to which one is going to meet your needs um, which one should you use I would say this use TK enter if number one licensing matters number two PyQ is just too intimidating for you no need to like you know not do anything because PyQ is too hard just jump in with TK enter um, use it when the distribution size matter if you've got something that's going to be downloaded over a network uh, use it when you don't need anything fancy because it's probably not going to look fancy unless you work really hard um, use PyCute if you're cool with the GPL license or if you've got the money to purchase a commercial license uh, use it when you want pro looking results right out of the box you just you want it to look like a professional program um, without a lot of effort use it if you are okay with programming object oriented programming if you're not then you're gonna have troubles with that a lot of troubles uh, use it when you need some of those advanced widgets if you need the multimedia widgets or the web rendering or the syntax highlighting or, or the rich text or whatever it's all there it'll be ready for you to use now you're saying to me I'm not down with either one of those lists are there any alternatives uh, there certainly are and the only reason I'm comparing these two is one because they're the most popular but more importantly because I've written books on these two and uh, I feel qualified to talk about these two and I'd like you to buy one of my books but anyway if you're not into either TK enter or PyQ for whatever reason uh, there are a few more options and I'm gonna give the caveat that I'm not an expert on any of these I have probably gone through the elementary tutorial on them and that's about it um, but we've got WX Python which is a wrapper for WX widgets which is another C++ framework it's also LGPL just like PyQt um, it's been around a long time it's probably about as old as TK enter um, but it is probably developing a little bit faster TK enter is not really being developed much it's being developed but just not very quickly now I'm told and I don't remember where I heard this but apparently uh, Guido Van Rossum the creator of Python said that if he'd known about WX widgets back in the 90s that it may have been in the standard library instead of TK enter I don't know if that's true it seems plausible they seem very comparable in a lot of ways um, it doesn't seem to be quite as comprehensive and vast as PyQt but it does seem a little bit more capable than TK enter it seems like it's got its act together just a little bit more okay the next alternative is Kivy K-I-V-Y and that is something pretty new it is actually a native Python toolkit which is pretty awesome I'm glad we see glad to see we're actually getting one uh, it's MIT licensed it used to be LGPL now it's MIT so it's very permissive which is pretty cool um, and it is designed for modern webby mobile kind of interfaces in fact it can 
uh, be compiled to support mobile. If you want to support Android or iOS, um, I have tried to learn it. It's kind of a different paradigm. It uses its own declarative domain specific language for GUI building. Um, it's kind of a different thing. It's really cool. Uh, I suggest you look into it if you're interested in that kind of thing, but know that it's it's probably got its own learning curve. Uh, there's also PyGTK, which is the Python bindings for GTK. Um, it's mostly used on Linux. It's LGPL. Um, I, for whatever reason, I don't see people using it a lot. Now on Linux, GTK is super popular, and if you're writing for a Linux desktop like GNOME or Mate or Cinnamon, then you probably, you know, will be interested in PyGTK, but I don't see people using it on other platforms. Even on Linux, most people would probably use Qt for developing small apps. Um, yeah, it's an alternative. Uh, last of all, I have to mention it. I don't know that it's really an alternative to GUIs, but uh, web technology, web frameworks. Um, when you bring up GUIs, a lot of people will say, oh, just learn Django or just learn Flask. Make it a web thing. And of course, you can wrap your web apps in um, Electron or something like that and make them into desktop apps. That's what Spotify does or Visual Studio Code and lots of things. Um, now, that's definitely an option. I've written a lot of web code in my life. It's my bread and butter at work. Um, but it does have a significant learning curve if you don't already know HTML, CSS, JavaScript. It's kind of a whole world of its own. It's a totally different paradigm. If you're interested in actually just writing desktop GUI apps and you are starting at square zero, you just know Python and nothing else, don't don't go there. <laughs> just don't don't go. If you want to write web apps, absolutely. It's a great it's a great skill to have. It's a very valuable skill to have. It's not the shortest path to get you to a working GUI uh, for sure. So there's that. Um, but yeah, that's my comparison. TK Enter versus PyQt. Hopefully you learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm sure I didn't think of everything. Um, once again, be sure to check out my books if you're interested in either one. Both available from Pact Publications. You can get them on Amazon, uh, O'Reilly, anywhere fine books on programming are sold. So, peace y'all. God bless.